Welcome to Mysterious Goings On. We're going to get right to the show after these messages. Hi, this is Cassandra Lane. I'm the author of We Are Bridges, a memoir. You're listening to Mysterious Goings On with Alex Greenwood. Jen Mann had what appeared to be the perfect life, a successful career as a best-selling author and award-winning blogger, a devoted husband, teenage kids who weren't total jerks, and a badass minivan. So imagine her surprise when at age 47, a midlife crisis kicked her straight in the lady bits. Well, we're going to find out a lot more about that today as we welcome Jen Mann, the New York Times best-selling author with her latest book, Midlife Bites. Jen, welcome to Mysterious Goings On. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yes. Uh, being kicked in the lady bits is not pleasurable. No. Um, no. But it's eye-opening, I assume. Yes? <laughs> it was very eye-opening. Yes. It definitely um, it makes you wake up and realize what is going on in your life. And you maybe need to take a closer look. As someone who has written a lot about being punched in the throat or wanting to punch people in the throat, it was a very different thing. It was more. It was a lot more internal uh, introspection this time, instead of looking at everybody else, I was looking at myself. You know, I got that from reading the book. Uh, I've got a, of course, listeners, I have a pre, uh, a pre uh, publication book that I, I was fortunate enough to read. Uh, the actual new book comes out in January. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But uh, there was this thing where I kept getting that you had kind of this, well, it wasn't kind of, it was an epiphany about your life. And, and the book covers, like every section of the book covers certain aspects of your life. We're talking everything from uh, your body image to your husband's your relationship with your husband, um, with your kids, with other parents, all of these things. And the through line I kept seeing, though, was there was, and maybe I read into this, obviously, pardon the pun, but maybe there was this uh, somewhat gentle surprise even at yourself throughout this book because you had established yourself as the people on a bunch in the throat person and a very funny acerbic great stuff but this one was like wow um you know I just felt that punch in the lady bits and I'm still a little surprised and reeling from it yeah um Alex I think you nailed it it's awesome when somebody actually like sees sees what I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> um, you get it. No, it was, it was. Um, and I think that's why this book was so hard for me to write. Um, you know, I always read my, I always read my online reviews. And so yesterday I decided I'd go on Goodreads and start reading all the reviews that are coming in from the early readers. And, and like 99% of them are very positive, you know, but there was a lady in there who said like this, I normally like what Jen does, but this was a little too, a little too raw for me. And I thought, well, I'm, yeah, it was a little too raw for me too, lady. Like, I <laughs> just, um, you know, I had, I was really surprised. I really thought I'd kind of dodge that. I got through 40 and 45, kind of like, those were kind of like the best years of my life. I was sort of like, I am trucking, like, look at this. Like, I'm, you know, I've never been, <clears throat> excuse me, I've never had a, my career is great. My family is great. Everyone's healthy and happy. And, you know, and I kind of figured out who I was and I liked myself and, you know, and so I thought I made it. And then I got to 47 and then I was like, can I swear on here? <laughs> I think you should try. Okay, great. <laughs> so I got to 47 and I thought, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, what have I done with myself and my life? And it's not, you're lying. It's not that great. It's, you know, there are things that need to be fixed. There are things that you need to come to terms with. And so I, uh, yeah, I got, I got kicked in the lady bits and I started writing, but it was, it was a hard book to write. Yeah. You know, um, you and I have some things in common. We're both writers and I've got to say, you've already achieved one of my life goals, which is to have the, the phrase New York times bestselling author used within a mile of my name. So mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's interesting though, that you get to this point and you talk about this in midlife fights where, yeah, that's so great. Yeah. And I got the kick-ass minivan. The kids aren't total jerks, all that stuff. Right. Yet it's not the the fully fulfilling thing that people would assume it is, right? 
Yeah. And then there's some guilt that goes along with that because I know, like, I know, like I'm super lucky and I'm super blessed. And I've had like all these things that I know, like there's people who would like, you know, I talk about, there's one point where I like, I end up accidentally doing stand up comedy. And, and the whole reason why I did it was because everybody in that room wanted to like, you know, stick me with a fork because they were like, are you kidding me? Like I would kill to get on stage. And this guy is offering you a chance to get on stage. And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, like how, how, how much more can I possibly want? Right. And, right. but yet I think we all, we all do. I mean, I'd like to think that maybe even, I don't know, some of the billionaires are sitting around, you know, who have achieved huge success and their names are, everyone knows it, but they're still like, yeah, but that's why those dudes are going to space. You know, like that is a midlife crisis, right? <laughs> well, there. that's, that's just the 21st century version of hair plugs in a Corvette, I assume, but uh, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there, there's that show. I don't, I've watched a little, but anyway, I, I read a lot of commentary about these, a succession, right. Where all these oh, yeah. this billionaire family and, and they've actually interviewed people with money or no people with money. So this is actually not too far from the truth. These people are, they have everything but they're not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't looked inside themselves. And, and, and I'm not saying this about you, but a lot of these folks, because like you said, they're trying to do anything they can, right, to distract themselves from themselves. Yeah. You are brave enough to turn around and look in the mirror and go, okay, this is Jen. This is my body. This is not the body I, I, I think I have, or I want to have, you know, this is Jen. This is, this is uh, the situation with my husband's startup. This is all of these things. And I mean, and then you have the absolute, you know, uh, well, I, I don't want to say stones because, you know, you're a lady, but I mean, you know, <laughs> but you have the guts to put it all on paper, you know, and, and I mean, folks, this is raw, but I don't mean raw in like a, a nasty way. It's raw in an honest way. I hope so. I hope that came across. That is one thing, no matter what I've written over the last, I'm going to be celebrating my 10th year anniversary this year, this December of, of, of my viral hit that sent me off into this career that I have now. And over the last 10 years, I have tried to be as honest as I can with people. And I think that's where this book kind of came into it too, because there were some things I wasn't being really honest about. And I just felt like I needed to start a conversation because nobody was talking about this stuff. And, you know, I started out in the parenting world. I was, I was a mommy blogger back in the day and we could talk about that and we could commiserate about that, but yet we all kind of hit our like late forties and everyone starts whispering, you know, about things and they're in, and you don't know who you, you know, you're just like, can I trust you? Can I tell you something? Cause you know, how are you? And, and then you've got that fake, you know, I'm fine. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> More wine, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so I just thought, no, you're not fine. I'm not fine. You're not fine. We should really talk about this. Let's step back if we could for just a moment, Jen, let's talk about, uh, punching people in the throat <laughs> Less. You, you've kind of made a cottage industry out of punching people in the throat you've got three, made a cottage three, in, right oh three. i have five now five? Oh my five. God. i have five people in punching throat books and um i've made a cottage industry out of it who knew my my all my english professors from college are you know rolling in their graves going i can't believe that that this is this is what this is what put you on the map lady like this is what you did but i'm irma bombeck with f bombs i wouldn't change a thing i love it it's it was a gift that was given to me and I just, I just worked really hard and kept it going, you know? You know, I was going to make the Bombeck comparison, you know, grass is always greener on the other side of the septic tank, folks. If you don't yeah. know, go look it up. Gen X people, we kind of know that. There was even like Carol Burnett did a TV movie based on that one, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, but, but I mean, I wasn't going to, I wasn't sure if I was going to bring her up or not, but good, but you are, you are Irma Bombeck with F-bombs. Um, and she, she was really the trailblazer there, but she you, was. you strike me though, as the, you took the baton and you have just gone light years <laughs> since there. Well, thank you. That's, that's very high praise, but she is, she is the original and, and, you know, and I, I, I think, you know, when I, I wrote about the elf on the shelf 10 years ago in December, yeah. and that was the post <laughs> on my blog, people on punch throat that kind of like set everything into motion. Right. And one of the very first comments that came through was someone saying, Oh my God, you're just like Irma Bombeck. And then she did like dot, dot, dot. She's like, but with F bombs, <laughs> like, you know, and I thought that's exactly because I would try to explain sort of what I write because I don't, no one knows quite where to shelve me in the bookstore. No one knows. And even midlife bites. Is it self-help? Is it memoir? Is it a rant? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, is it humor even? You know, is it humor? Just, yeah. yeah. Right. 
Um, which of course, you know, gets back to you being invited to do stand up. I mean, my gosh, because mm -hmm. you are funny. It's 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 interesting because I'll be reading along, and you'll have this stuff that's pretty heavy, and then you'll you'll just at the end of the sentence <laughs> just put a little turn. And I'm sorry, I have notes here, but they just went out on me. But a little turn <laughs> of phrase at the end. yeah, typical podcaster lament. But anyway, but then there's this wonderful turn of phrase. So I wanted to ask you about that really quickly, though. Mm -hmm. You said since you were five, you wanted to be a writer. Right. Mm -hmm. And you still believe you have a, the great American novel in you, don't you? I do. <laughs> so tell us a little. Come on, a little. <laughs> well, I just think I still have more to tell. You know, it's interesting because I think that the key the key word right now and when you hit midlife is pivot, you know, whether it's we're all thinking of Ross and Rachel, you know, sofa moving a sofa with a pivot, pivot. But we're all kind of pivoting and we're all and it's like I've reached a point where People want to, I want to punch though it was kind of winding down anyway. My kids are teenagers. There's not a lot to write about. They're kind of, you know, it's not funny. They don't find it funny. <laughs> um, and so Midlife Fights, again, was another kind of, it came out of the blog. It was a blog post I wrote and, um, and it caught on and I thought, oh, that's great. And this is a great pivot and I can't wait to do more with Midlife Fights. But also deep down, I also still have like a, a book inside me, a novel inside of me that I really want to write. And so I have actually been working on it uh, this year because I'm under contract. So I can't, I, I'm traditionally published and I'm self-published. So right. I have a foot in both worlds, but I can't self-publish anything right now because I'm under contract with Random House. And so gotcha. I thought, well, I might as well take this time. And cause I don't know quite where I'm going next. I don't know if Midlife Bites, you know, if it takes off, I'll of course want to add to that and do more with that. But if it I don't God, we're not going to talk about it. It's going to take off and it's going to be fine. But, you know, like knock on wood or, you know, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, but I, I still have, yeah, I still have this. I still have, I think we all do, don't we? I mean, there's always one more book that we want to write that we haven't oh, written yeah. yet. Absolutely. I just turned in my eighth for my, my series and I basically said I'm done and I've already got people going, you're not done. Yeah. You're not done, buddy. You're not done. You're not done. But that, and that's a great feeling. Even if it's just two people telling you that, that for me, that's yep. boom. There you go. That's it. So, so Jen, um, but when we talk about that, there's, there's so many things that stand out about me, but there was this particular part and it's about men. And I want to talk to you about, and now obviously I'm male and I'm married and, and I'm a Gen Xer. So, you know, um, but, um, and I like to think I'm a, you know, not quite just a moron when it comes to anticipating my, my wife's needs that mm -hmm. she doesn't express because she's trying to be mom and she has a career and all these things. Um, but you outlined a few things, though, about your husband in particular. He did a startup and you went after it after a while. You just couldn't swallow some things anymore. And you basically reached out and said, you're being selfish. Mm -hmm. And, and I just thought that was a very powerful thing. I think a lot of women, like a lot of men on the flip side are, are loathe to say that to their partner. That must've been the hardest thing ever. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't a very good day, but I felt like it needed to be said. It, <sighs> I, <laughs> she's like, why did you ask me that? <laughs> like I literally, we literally have a therapy session in an hour. So <laughs> Cause, no, because it's like, I think that probably was the meanest thing I could say to him. It was, it was, it was really mean, but I felt like it had to be said again. I, I tell the truth to everybody. And I oh, just... Yeah. No, no, I, it, I didn't mean to like hit a raw nerve. I apologize. Yeah, no, 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 just, you're fine. Right you're fine. Book. I mean, that's, it's in there. I put it in a book. I got to be ready to talk about it. Right. No, <laughs> I, um, but yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't my best moment, but I also still, I also still stand by it though. Like, I feel like, yeah. I feel like the way I looked at it was no successful man would ever tell his wife, you know, like, or excuse me, let me rephrase that. Like, no, no wife tells her successful husband, like, like my mother was a stay at home mom. And like, I have lots of friends who are stay at home moms and, and they chose that so that their husbands could have success. Like my mom has told me time and time again, like there was no way for your dad to do what he did. If I worked to like, somebody had to be here and take care of you guys and take care of everything else. And, you know, so he could just focus on his work. And I thought never in my life would my mom ever sit down, sit my dad down and be like, you know, I need a legacy too. Like I need to do something too, to have my name up there too. And that's what really set me off because I just thought of all the women I know who stand by and support their husbands and their husbands never think twice about, you know, gee, did you want to do something today, honey? That, you know, did you want to do something different with your life? And, 
And I'm not saying that that's a bad choice. Those women made that choice and they're happy. And many of them are happy with their choice. You know, don't get me wrong. But I just know that sometimes I would see like my mom, like, like I went off to college and my mom was really angry when I left for college. And I was, and I remember asking my dad, I was like, what is she so mad about? And my dad's like, because she's, you're going to do something that she never got the opportunity to do. Like she never got to go to college and have a career. And my mom's had a great life. Like she's a very, you know, she's, she's a very well cared for lady, you know, but, but it's like, but, but there are still things that I think deep down, if she was honest, she probably wishes she could have done something maybe a little bit different, but she would have never sat my dad down and been like, here's the deal. Like, I need you to, to dial it back so that I can have a career now. And when my husband told me that, I just felt like, hang on a second. Like, th- like I need you to help me. Like this was our goal. We were once on this path right. and now all of a sudden you want to go on a different path. And I think that's incredibly selfish. And so I well, said it. you talked to a friend about this and you said, you know, there's resentments in every marriage. And she said, well, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, festering resentment is not a good thing. And that right- was really eye opening too, because you know, I have always prided ourselves like, you know, people will say, gosh, you guys bicker a lot. Like if they were around us, he and I bicker a lot. And I'm like, yeah, that's a sign of like a good marriage. Like you're supposed to like, you're supposed to like work it out. Like you're supposed to fight it out, you know? And I would, and my friends would be like, hmm, are you though? <laughs> like, is that right? And I would just be like, ah, what do you know? You know? And then, <laughs> but when it was the whole resentment thing, I was like, well, we all have resentments. And, and like the look on her face, I was like, oh fuck, we don't. Oh, yeah. oh. I'm like, I'm super wrong here. And she's like, you're mm-mm. She's like, that's not good. And that's when I decided like, yeah, we needed to really talk about it. And thus the need for, for therapy, <laughs> which is perfect, which is healthy though. That's, yeah. that was my point. I was trying to get to though, is that not only was it brave of you to do that and, and to, to, to just say, okay, wait a minute here. I'm 50% of this partnership here. And I got some words for you. I mean, mm-hmm. my spouse and I do that. Uh, we we try not to you know we're not one of those couples like don't go to bed angry well yeah every now and then but but you know we're not into that but we're definitely into communication and talking uh-huh. to each other about stuff and and like you we're generally a united front with the kid uh-huh. you know unless one of us is being a total dick and then right there you go okay right. fair enough well i i just want i wanted to say that uh the majority of our listeners to the show are female uh that's okay. according to my my wonderful uh you know stats yes. and all that stuff so um th- they know that i'm pretty open <laughs> about when i'm a total idiot so i you know but i read that and i wanted to tell you that while i don't feel like i'm like a, a total crow magnon there are some things there i i saw in what you wrote that i think will be beneficial to me going forward as in my relationship with my spouse and with my daughter and so yeah. I, I really appreciate that and so i, I really think that um, I think that a lot of men could benefit uh, from uh, what you're writing here and in a lot of ways. You know, it's interesting you say that because you're about, I don't know, second or third husband now that has read this book in advance or even the blog post, you know, because the blog post that kicked it off is still up on the blog and it's in the book as well as the intro to the book. And so, um, but I'll hear from men, of course, you know, there's men that don't like what I have to say, but I'll hear, but the ones I like to hear from are the men who say, you know, I, I'm, I understand my wife a little bit better now. Like, I think I know a little bit better, especially, I mean, there's a chapter in there called like, I do every fucking thing. And I think that when, you know, the, the whole, there's a lot of articles out now that they're starting to recognize like the, the, just the, the extent of the mental load that the women are carrying in a, in a relationship. And even just this morning, like I told my husband, I said, and that's something that we're working on. Cause I said, um, our son needs a dermatologist appointment. He's, he's, we don't have a dermatologist. I need to find one. And he was like, would you like me to do it? And I was like, oh my God, yes, <laughs> like, please. You know, like just things like that. Like, oh yes, please. You know, cause he used to say like, well, I like to grocery shop. And I'm like, yeah, but you want me to go with you. Like he thinks that's a date. And I'm like, that's not a date. Like I need you to get everything on the list so I can do things here. And then we can come together and have dinner tonight, you know? Yeah. And and I'm like, if you want to date me, then date me. But taking me to the grocery store is not helping me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was, yeah. I think I need a chapter in there just dedicated to the, to the men folk who want to, who want to read it and understand a little bit better and what you guys can, because I think that's what men need. Like I've decided that men need, like you guys need, like um, you need specific instructions. Like I can't just say, do the dishes, I, you know, and I've seen this with my teenage son. I have to be like, he'll be like, what do you mean? And I'm like, 
pre-rinse them, get all the food off of them, like, you know, like, put them in the dishwasher in the correct slots where they belong, you know? <laughs> add soap, <laughs> close the door tightly and then turn it on. And then when it's done, you must unload it. And he's like, oh, unload it. Yes. And put them all the way where everything belongs. I'm like, and you know where spatulas go and you know where forks go, like put it, nothing left on the countertops. So I think that's what I need to do is a whole chapter of just, because I don't think that men are unwilling to help. I think they just don't know how to help. Am yeah, I right? yeah. Am I it's, wrong only, it's, it's <laughs> only by dint of my uh, somewhat OCD tendency to want things tidy that mm -hmm. I just do the dishes. I get up in the morning at 530. I go in and just unload the dishwasher, reload it, whatever. I know, I know it's the Bless sexiest you. thing about me. Let I me was like, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Look out, Your ladies. wife is He's... a lucky lady. <laughs> yeah, tell her. Yeah, but no, but I'm that way. But so I think that's a thing men need to understand too. And by the way, dudes, this whole like gender role, uh, you know, t uh, task thing is is bullshit. bullshit. I mean, you know what? You're not just mowing the lawn and barbecuing burgers. Okay, you can make regular dinner at the, you know, in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to do all. There's so many things, but that's one of the things where I feel like I'm earning my keep in the relationship too. Um, that's cool. Because I'm kind of flipped from where you, you know, it's, it's kind of like with you. I mean, I'm a writer, I'm a PR consultant, but uh, she's the one with the corporate job with with mm -hmm. the benefits. Okay, I've got mm -hmm. to support her. Okay, she's. And that's why it is. And my daughter, she understands how that is. And she, she loves that dynamic. And I think that's a healthy thing for her to see. Totally. But again, I totally love your idea, Jen, about, you know, maybe, maybe when your your next edition, when you sell bestseller, this one, you could get a revised with a little checklist mm. for dumb, dumbass men, just so we know. <laughs> no, for the good ones, for the good men. That's the thing. That's, that's, that's the thing. It's like, you know, growing up watching all those, those sitcoms where it's like the husband was always like adult and the wife, oh, you know, like, I don't oh. think that did you guys any benefit. Like, you know, we no. all were like, yeah, look at that powerful lady, like juggling it all. And his your idiot husband, <laughs> like, you know? And so it's like, I want to kind of like get away from that too. Or try, you know, I don't want you guys to be, I don't want to make a list for idiot husbands. I want to make a list for husbands who like, who love their wives and want to do the right thing. I appreciate you saying that because that's a pet peeve of mine for years. Like I want to, I will not watch sitcoms where the man is a total fool. I just yeah. won't do that. It's, I don't think it's all that funny. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't think it was funny if the woman was a total fool. It's just mm -mm. really, let's come on. You know, I think that's all. And I don't, you're right. I don't think it does men any favors because we start to think that, well, okay, we're all going to be uh, Tim Taylor on to a yeah. Was, yeah, we're going to be that guy, you know. Ray Romano, um, you know. Ray Romano. <laughs> Like, and I just, I feel like, I mean, let's just all make fun of the neighbors. Like that's really where who we, let's like all agree that the neighbors are dumb. And so we'll just make fun of them. I think that's my spirit animal right there is that <laughs> the neighbors are dumb. That's it. Yeah. That's it right there. That's Jim. it. That's all we got to do. Oh, oh and one last thing here. I know we're, we're running out of time here um, and you've got things to do, obviously, but <laughs> I, I do feel a little bad, but anyway. Okay. No, you're uh, fine. <laughs> okay. I, I, the one thing that's one more thing about men, get, forgive me. I'm a male. I'm going to, I've zeroed in on some of this is, is the Dave. Can you just Dave. tell, tell the listeners about the Dave, please? Oh, I just got like hot thinking about it. Okay. And hot in a bad way not like with the dishes. Um, so Dave, so, so I do a lot of before COVID struck and we were all homebound. I used to do a lot of like public speaking. And so I would be, you know, like different civic organizations and things like that would bring me in and I'd speak. And so I was speaking, I think it was a chamber of commerce and, and sometimes the chambers of commerce and the civic organizations, unless it's like a real female focused one, it's like, it can be a tougher audience. Cause I'm not that friendly and to the men folk. And so I'm trying to do better, but, and, but, but I'm really about empowering women. And so, um, so I'm kind of used to like, I've had men walk out. I've had men kind of harumph in the back and that kind of thing. And so, but Dave was different. <laughs> and so, so I did this whole thing and I, and I it was like a luncheon. And so afterwards, I always have like a little table set up and I can sell all my books to them. And so I have this line and it's like all like women in the line practically at this point. And Dave comes over and asks if he can like look through the book before he decides if he wants to buy it. And the book was called Working with People I Want to Punch in the Throat. And, and I said, of course, take, go ahead, grab a copy, look at it, whatever you want to do. And so he's kind of thumbing through it. And there was something in there about uh, mansplainers. <laughs> So he said, mansplaining. He said, I don't think you know what a mansplainer is. <laughs> That's too much. That's perfect. <laughs> and like, you know, they're like 10, because it's kind of winding down. And so they're like 10 women at the end the line. And like all of us, like our heads just went, you know, like it was like the record scratch moment kind of thing. And we were just like, and one woman was like, did you just 
say what I think you said? Like, did you just say that out loud? And, and I was like, Oh, Dave, 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 Dave. And, and he kept calling my book a little book. He's like, what's your little book about? And I was like, well, my little book is a New York times bestseller, but whatever, that's fine. You can call it a little book if you'd like, is it too heavy for you? I'm confused. <laughs> and so finally, after that, like we kind of went back and forth about it. And finally I was like, you know what, Dave, why don't you go ahead and just, I'll just take that back. And I just took the book and I was like, you're blocking my table. And I thought, I just, because another thing I write a lot about is that I am not everybody's cup of tea and I don't want to be everybody's cup of tea. And I don't aim to be that. I just want to be there for the people who I want to be there for. I had 10 people lined up who wanted to talk to me and wanted to support me. I don't need to waste any more energy on Dave. Like we are done talking, Dave. Thank you for stopping by, but now you're blocking my table. Please move along. (laughs) So that's what happened. He was probably, you know, brought up on the toxic soup of Rush Limbaugh and the feminazi thing. Yeah. You know, anytime a woman stands up for herself as a human being, there must be something suspect about it. That kind of yes. crap. Yes. I, I'm sorry you run into that. I was, I, I've got to be honest. I, I was reading it. Okay. That uh-huh. section. And I kept waiting on you to go, now this didn't really happen, but this is how <laughs> I, I think men perceive me. But no, yeah. it really happened. No, it's, it really there happened. are witnesses. It's well, crazy. The thing is too, is that sometimes like, like that, like, a, like, you know, I'm getting paid to be there and I, it's kind of, they're more professional people. So I usually, you know, I kind of like different personas that I can put on, you know, one time I got kicked out of not coming to speak to a church group because they were worried. I'd like stand up on the pulpit and be like, thanks for fucking having me or something. <laughs> so it's like, like I can, like I can switch, you know, personalities if I need to. And so, you know, I'm, when I'm there like that, like I'm trying to be very like more professional, like I'm firm, but like, yeah, I mean, if this was just like a normal old, like, cause I host my own book signings a lot too. Like if he had just shown up or had wandered by at something that like I'm doing by myself, oh, we would have had so many more words, but like, because like, I'm trying to keep it like civilized and kind and calm with him. I was like, you need to move, but no, it happens. I mean, my favorite is there's always an, there's always an older man, like my dad's age, like 70 something who will always, there's always old men that will come by and tell me that punching in the throat can kill somebody. And I'll be like, cool. And like, I'm just like, okay. And they're just like, well, that's, that. and there's always a lady who tells me that my titles, there's always some lady that will tell me my titles are violent. So midlife bites. I'm, I mean, I feel like, you know, what does that meme about? Like, we're all going to be old people old, in the old folks home and we're just going to bite people. Like, and so <laughs> So I hope that's what they think now. I'm just like, I'm a biter. Like, I'm just like, yeah, like, I'm going to get you. Don't come too close. <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah. I would just say bite me. But yeah, you're, you're, you're doing better than me on that. Last yeah. thing, last thing there for your constituency out there, there's lots of women who are reading your books. And what, what if they feel like they've got to reach out or change something in their life? And maybe they maybe they want to blog or what? What you, you give a lot of suggestions of people, things people could do once the kids have flown the coop and you're kind of staring across this, this empty room at your spouse, maybe some things that could give them some actualization and and more purpose in their life. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, for me, writing is always, that's my purpose. And so I always like try And I think writing is a therapeutic thing. Like, even if you're never going to publish it, like I have, I always tell people I have, I have, you know, 600 published blog posts and I have 600 unpublished blog posts, you know, in my drafts folder. Like there's just things that I write down that are just not for public consumption at this point and, or never were. I mean, they're just, I'm so fucking pissed. I mean, whatever it is, like, like just make a list. And so, um, so I always, I'm always pushing writing on people, but it's not for everybody. And so, you know, this year we did get a pandemic puppy and I do understand now the dog people out there. I understand how a dog does kind of calm me down and, and like last night, I think all of us, we, I don't know, we had a bad night last night. We we're putting up the Christmas tree. And so there's a lot of, uh, and, oh, yeah. and at one point the poor dog is laying in the middle of the room and we are all petting him. We're all just like, oh, oh, you know? so, like, I mean, he loved it, but you know, <laughs> so I think, you know, and I think just figuring out what your passion is and, and following your passion. And, and I mean, obviously if you want to start blogging or writing, I have a book about that too. And you know, it's called how I fucking did it. And so it tells you everything. It tells you all my secrets of what I do and and how I did it. There's not a big secret. It's just luck and hard work and, you know, just making sure that you're consistent and, and that you have a strong voice and a strong, a strong story to tell. Well, with you, it's luck, hard work, and talent. You're an excellent writer, and oh, thank it's, you. A, it's a captivating read. Uh, Jen Mann is leading the movement to create a new space where middle-aged women can share openly and honestly with one another. That space is on Facebook. It is called it is. the the Midlife it's called Bites. Midlife Bites. Yeah, it's a okay. private group 
called Midlife Bites. I created it really soon after I wrote the, um, after I wrote the blog post, I wrote the blog post about three years ago now. And once I started getting the reaction to that, I thought, well, we need a place. And my audience, I have over a million followers on Facebook. And so my audience kind of lives on Facebook. I've tried to move them. They won't go anywhere else. Yeah. So, so we're kind of stuck there. So I created a private Facebook group and, uh, it's for, uh, I would say female identifying people, people who are going through um, the hormonal changes of midlife of midlife and and maybe a midlife crisis and things like that. And we kind of talk about everything and everything in there. It's kind of a it's a it's not for everybody. It, right. it can be a little saucy. And because uh, I think the very first and I wrote about this in the Midlife Bites book too. the very first um, post when I created this group, I thought, oh, I'm going to keep it kind of serious because all my other yeah. groups are wild. You know, I was like, I'm going to keep this one serious and we're going to really talk about important things. And so I was trying to find like scientific articles and shit that I could share in there. And in the meantime, because I thought, well, I got to get the discussion going. And in the meantime, this woman, she shared about it was July or August. We were all really hot. She shared about frozen dildos. And I was <laughs> like, and we're off. <laughs> So there we go. <laughs> Once again, Gen Man leads the way. <laughs> I'm telling you, frozen dildos and the line of, the line about the flavor ice company, by the way, that one classic oh. chef's kiss on that. So well <laughs> done. You. And listeners, you're going to want to read that line. It's hilarious. The whole book is, you know, I don't drop a lot of F-bombs on the show, but I will. It's a fucking hilarious book. You've got to read it. Mid Life Bites. Jen, more about you. What's the link? We're going to put it in the show notes. Where'd they go? Uh, they go to genmanrights.com or people I want to punch in throat.com. You'll Very find good. me there. And uh, January 4th, the book comes out, but good news, good news. You can pre-order it now. And I'm going to tell you something as a writer, you writers listening out there, you know, pre-orders are the lifeblood of a new book. Get out there and get this book. Please. Jen, man, I have had such a good time meeting you. It's, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. And I've learned a lot reading your book. Thanks for joining us here on Mysterious. Thank Going you, through. Alex. This was a lot of fun. It was totally worth putting on pants for. And I'm so glad I'm here. And um, I can't wait to to listen more. I, I I just found you. I just found this podcast. And now I got to go back and listen to all the episodes. Oh, bless your heart. Lots of writers out there. Our good friend, Michael Mackey, introduced us. Yes. And we should, I should throw that out we there. We should give a it. shout out to Michael. Yes. Well, if you, <laughs> hey, Jen, do me a favor with Michael. If you thought this was okay tell him that so i can get him on the show next year you know he, oh he's a blast have you listened to, so i have a podcast and he's on my podcast and he is an absolute hoot so I, yes I he should to, totally come on why I wouldn't should, he? Uh, exactly well i should put a, i'm gonna put a link okay folks there's gonna be a lot of links you know this about me <laughs> i mean there's gonna be a buy link there's gonna be your website there's gonna be blah 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 it will be at mgopod.com. It'll also be in the show notes for where you get your podcast. You know as well as I do, I say this every time, sometimes the stupid aggregators, they strip out the links. Good news is there's no stripping at mgopod.com because nobody's a house. But anyway, point mm. being, go to mgopod.com and you can learn more about this. And again, Jen, I've enjoyed it. And uh, hey, good luck on the book and happy holidays to you. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks so much for listening to Mysterious Goings On. Don't forget we have a complete archive of all of our interviews, monologues, updates, live readings, dead readings. All of that stuff is available at mgopod.com. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to us so you never miss an episode. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the usual suspects. Please join us there. Again, don't forget, mgopod.com also has links where to find me on social media and how to get in touch in case you want to be a guest here on the show. Well, I think it's time that I move on for this week, but until next time, keep reading.